I was just looking for a spark to light that flame again. You know, the, the passion, the love for what I do. This stuff relit that flame and then it became a full blown fire. One thing I don't do is get caught up in, it has to make sense. That's the thing with this stuff, it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be engaging, it has to be different. This is escapism. When I learned this stuff, I just closed the curtain on the whole creative block thing and I was like, okay cool, it would be dope if I could just put myself in the same scene as myself, like I'm directing myself, just making me feel uncomfortable. But how do I make it different? Animation. So you can see my influence and you can see what I'm going for here. I'm just trying to do some different sh you know what I mean? Um, I've been animating for years now. So I'm just trying to take this in a different direction and obviously learning this on YouTube. Again, YouTube is the university that every creator should go to, man. And f these schools, f these lessons, f that. If you've got the discipline, go on YouTube, man, and teach yourself. That's why I learned all this stuff, man. The thing is, I'm not trying to be a duplicate of anybody. There's nothing wrong with being inspired by people. I don't want people to look at this and think, oh, it's just doing what he did. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to take elements of what he did and then put my kind of spin on it. And my spin is actually using 2D flash animation that we've been using for years. And the only way is up, just level up with this. Shit. So do you know what I mean? So this is a small behind the scenes of how I did this video, distractions. My whole thing with this man, like just like make relatable stuff. Do you know what I mean? You know, everyone obviously with a lockdown right now, everyone's working in front of their computer, everyone's sitting in front of a camera, just chilling and stuff like that. So look, how can I make something mundane, something everyday and relatable into something entertaining? So yo, after watching loads of his videos, I just went nuts on YouTube looking for ideas, you know, through the door transitions, vertigo effects zooming through the eye and the thing is i started getting ideas after i was realizing the things that i could possibly learn then these ideas i started writing down okay cool this, this is going to happen and you know i just used evernote and saved it in this document and made loads of these notes so they're the notes for distractions right there and yo even this <laughs> the, the behind the scenes that you're watching now i made a document for this you see these like uh youtube links and stuff like that these are all videos and things that i was inspired by it's like i want to learn this so i can put this in the video what you're seeing now are the notes for the opening sequence of this behind the scenes clip that you're watching now you know like uh the green screen shark I didn't use that but the thunderstorm i use in the background so for the most part, these types of videos with the transitions, some of it is, you know, you've got to like kind of move your camera around like this and But then some of it is in post-production, but you can save yourself a lot of time by doing a lot of the movement with the actual camera itself. Do you know what I mean? And then you can add your little uh, motion blurs on top of it. And you know, whether you use plugins or you do it manually, you can add that in post-production after. But a lot of the times, you know, with my transitions, what I did with um, the first one, how to start your day, when I did that turnaround from the computer screen up to me and into my eye and then back into the computer, that kind of thing, I literally just like came down here and then like that. And even with the cup underneath, under like that. It's just simple stuff, man, it's simple stuff. So I get all my stock footage from Envato. If that's how you pronounce it, Envato, Env I don't know, Envato, whatever. So as you can see here, this is the part with the alleyway where I open the curtain and it's there, it's like the girls there, what the hell? Just traveling down like the dark part of the mind. 
and then um, what's it got here? Yeah, so you can see here, this is the female that pops out of nowhere. So this was the original video, and I just roto brushed her out of this scene. So you know she had a transparent background, which we'll see later on in this video. So yeah, man, and then placed her in. Then of course later on down the line, there's that fiber optic speed data transfer nerve cable thing which is supposed to be my eye socket but it's the whole technological digital thing that i'm trying to tap into here this is where i fall down so uh yeah man envato is brilliant for stock footage all right cool so we've got the girl here from the stock footage that we took from envato so you know she's Hold up the camera, look up with herself, taking a picture, and we want to chop her out. So, okay, so we cut it here. So, you know, only make it a couple of seconds long. I don't want it to be too long. I'll time stretch it if needed. Let me go to the Roto Brush tool right here. Now, you take this tool, and the simple part is drawing around her to cut her out from the background scenery. So, just take our brush and we go around the edges like so. Um, don't worry too much about it being exactly in place um, because you can kind of you know move those points and edges later um, if you can get it right the first time you know it's less work to do later on but you know don't stress yourself too much because there will be <laughs> as you can see here there will be parts where you have to like start your thing again and it will loop like that you don't want that in there so you have to go back and correct that um, because you know obviously for after effects it's a lot to take in there's you know hair going everywhere there's the background scenery so it's trying to fully identify the part in which you're trying to isolate so clearly this is a rough representation of what i'm trying to show you guys but um just for the sake of this example you know you clear up bits like that as you go along so once that's all said and done you know you've done your coverings for the rotor brush the area that you want to isolate you go down to the timeline press play so after effects can work out the parts in which that you've isolated and translate it into um, an asset with an alpha channel which we have here so yeah this is the result as you can see the girl has hair that's kind of like wispy and you know we want to see parts of that coming out from the asset itself so that doesn't look right so what we do now is we go straight to our refine edges brush tool pick a, um, a suitable size brush that's too big let me get it a little bit small there you go and just like you did before go around the edges where the hair is and what this will do is almost like create a mask like you see here it's almost like negative camera kind of thing like from a photo and it would then if you go to the footage you see the hair looks a lot better now it looks more realistic you know it doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like a paper cutout so that's the main gist of cutting the girl out from the stock footage like that and having an alpha channel so i can obviously place her into the scene that i want to place her in um you know it's, it's, it's a lot of cleaning up and going back and tweaking but that's kind of the main basics of it all right so in regards to this project i went back i made those tweaks i was talking about earlier we found the edges and she was good to go so this was the final result i used just got it from the actual working file so um so once that was said and done dragged this on top of the alleyway scene and had it like rotated and scaling like she was just popping out from nowhere and i'm like what the hell and she flashes and takes the picture and just blinds the sh out of me, as you can see. All right, so here we're gonna talk about the masking and how I created the zoom through the eye effect. Um, I can't find the raw footage for the actual thing, so I'm just gonna use this. So bear in mind, I had to convert the footage into a freeze frame in order to do this. So, okay, we've got the new mask created on this layer here open these options up so we can check the mask is there which it is okay then we select the pen tool zoom in on the eye here that we're going to cut through and then draw a small circle around the pupil area maybe like so actually bring these in a little bit because what i did in the video it started from a small circle and then grew out to the actual shape of the eye itself so it starts small and then widens as the camera kind of pans in and goes to the layer below all right so as you can see here we've got the layer mask working so what we want to do is we want to go down to the layer mask options select subtract so now you see the hole in the eye and then what you want to do is add like a mask feather so change those parameters there 
like slide it up or down a little bit as to your liking. Just make the edges a little bit softer so it's not like hard and looks a bit, you know, off, so to speak. We want a bit of blurriness with this. Then what I did was get the Sabre effect that I downloaded from Video Copilot. Shouts out to Video Copilot for helping me and everybody else that uses After Effects, man. Drag and drop it onto our layer here. We get the Star Wars lightsaber thing. Then we change the alpha mode to mask glow. And then we go up to the core type and then change that to layer masks. As you can see, it's glowed up the path that we just drew earlier. Then go down to composite settings and then change that to add. And there we go. I'm the Terminator. Yeah, look at my eye. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, looking cool, man. So you can go up here and change the preset to whatever you want. They've got different settings here. I used core, but as you can see, there's a few different ones here. Uh, let's go back to core. Okay. And again, you can go up here and change the feathering around a little bit, depending on how you want it to look. I like it looking kind of bright like that. So I don't really change it that much, but you know, it's obviously to your liking, whatever you want it to look like. Okay. So now we go down to the timeline and what we want to do is we want to make the core grow from small to big so we can actually do this transition. So we go to mask path here and we put a keyframe on the timeline where we want it to stop growing and put a keyframe where it starts. So this literally involves going into the mask path bit and then just moving the points um, from the starting part, making it small. So it doesn't have to be like a perfect circle. It just has to be small because you would feather this part out and maybe motion blur it so it doesn't show up as much anyway. And the speed of things with the camera movements, you can get away with a lot. Um, I'm just telling you guys how to cheat. Okay, so we go to the end part here. That was the start done. So we pull these points out to match the shape of the eye as best we can. It doesn't have to be spot on again because by this point we would have already zoomed in and gone to the other part below the layer. So move these parts out. Go down to our timeline. Press play. See what we're working with. Some full resolution here, guys. So it might be a little bit slow, but whatever. As you can see, you know what I mean? It's growing, obviously a little bit slow. So what you can do is you can move the endpoint closer to the start. So it'll actually go quicker. And then there you have it, man. Just growing core like that. Then you go down to the transform options here and then click position and scale. And then you change the parameters according to how you want it to scale up. So I want it to go directly through the eye, obviously. Then move it in place, zoom it up and reveal the layer beneath and done deal. All right, so I've got my character here in Moho Pro 12, all right? So I had to make my character look like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's falling down, you know what I mean? Falling, arms frailing and legs and arms going everywhere. So I did that, rendered it out as a PNG sequence, got it in here, threw it into After Effects, there you go press play and that's what you see there ah, falling down and so i put it on top of this uh fiber optic you know background and you know just did the scaling down and positioning a little bit rotated it so it goes round and also threw a glow effect on that fiber optic layer right there so with this part as you can see i took it from this video clip here of me in the ilkley moors um, and then threw it into After Effects and as you can see I just like sliced out the background using the Roto Brush tool in After Effects. Yeah, that's how we do. Then took the layer and then made the blending mode stencil so I could turn it into a silhouette. So it's against the brick wall like that. Didn't want to just, you know, make it bored and just take my, you know, normal raw self and just put it there. You know, wanted to make people think, hang on, who is this person? Oh, hang on, it's Asha. So to make this bit work, it was just dragging the crashed out cartoon version of me into the brick wall part and then having the silhouette version of myself down there too. And then after that is obviously the voiceover of, yo, I know that ain't a cartoon version of me. You know, just to add to the whole, hang on, there's two versions of him in the same world of this crazy mental tangent this guy's gone off on. All right, so with this part for the window masking, um, I just feel myself at the window so I've got enough light on my face so I had the option to either brighten it up or darken it down. Went round the edges again using the uh, Roto brush tool to cut myself out and make it an alpha channel. 
I actually only used, I think like maybe the first couple of seconds for this because the rest of it was kind of rough. And you know, I could just like time stretch it and make it longer if I needed to, but it seemed to work out pretty cool. So that was all good. And then in order to place it in this window, I masked out that black area that you see here and then placed it right there and then just use like my judgment with the placement and the scaling to make sure it stayed in exactly the same place. Added some darkness to it, color correction, that kind of thing. So it kind of blends in with the darkness in the background. And I um, think it worked out pretty cool. If you're scaling like that, you can obviously see the defects, but hey, it works, man. When it goes fast, you can kind of get away with that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So the ghostly girl, if you notice her. So I had like a crazy ghostly image of this girl then just dragged and dropped it into After Effects and added some dark kind of effects to it to make it more ghostly and maybe a little bit of glow and just put it in there and chopped it up and had it flash in and out. And that part you see with the window and the curtain is actually like a freeze frame image where I masked out the background um, and then put the background on the layer below and then put the ghost girl in the middle so she's behind the curtain but in front of the background if that makes sense so that's how i did that you know what things fade away that's normal but it's how you rekindle that flame that matters my advice stay curious